Hi everyone. Uh, haven't been making a video for the last couple of weeks, but I was quite busy with tournaments and all that. Um, but there are some new special events in the new Assetto Corsa game. Well, new, it's almost a year old by now. So in Assetto Corsa Competizione, we have a wet competition again, and I haven't really been doing those much, but I gave it a try yesterday, and as you can see, it turned out quite well for me. I think I did like four or five attempts or so, especially uh, got faster with set of changes in adapting to the way you have to drive in the rain in the seto, and that's what I want to try to bring across in that video. Video a little. Uh, first of all, uh, running in the wet always means you will have quite low temperatures. Even though it says 25 track, I think it's even less, um, which will result in the end in tires being fairly cold. And cold tires also mean they don't have a lot of pressure. And especially in the rain, you will need pressure in the tires because if they are if they are too empty, they don't have a flat surface. But it's kind of the middle won't be in touch with the ground at all. You only have the sides of the tire touching the ground. And in the middle, you will actually have water um, causing you to have aquaplaning. So what we want to do is actually have the tire a little like this. So, and then adjusting for camera, we will have the inside on the track. Then we have more pressure. So the middle of the tire uh, also touches the track and the outside will only touch when we go to the corner and the whole suspension moves. Um, especially in the rain, we want the middle to to touch the ground on the straight and not so much the inside because that allows the tire to drain more water to the side. And especially with the, with the rain session that we have here where there's quite a lot of rain, there's a lot of water and puddles on the track that will slow the car down and eventually cause aquaplaning and well, you will lose grip and lap time. And therefore we want to have some pressure. So if I go to the wet preset setup, you will see the pressures are, well, 27.5 around that and what I load now will be my my rain set I built yesterday and you will see that I increased the pressures by what's that here 15 clicks at the back and around six to seven at the front so I gave it a lot more pressure for the tire to be there uh, from the first lap and also to um, reach the peak pressure faster. Uh, let me talk you through some more differences. I think the standard TC is around 7 or 8, which is way too much because the traction control will cut all the power all the time, even on the straight when you're already going 180 or so. Um, the ABS was at 5, I think. Just works slower easily. You can still turn. Um, what else do we have? Yeah, reduced fuel for, for that one because 6 is way too much for 9 laps. I think I increased it by one yesterday because I was running out at the end of the stint. That cost me like a couple tenths, so it could have been faster. Um, let me guess what I changed here. This is very typical for rain. Uh, you just go as soft as you can because every time uh, you have peak forces on, on the tire, that will cause the tire to skid. And the softer we make the springs and the dampers, the more movement the suspension allows and the less peaks the tire will experience and thus hopefully remains the grip level without under or oversteering too much. Um, I changed the dampers also, we can see especially at the rear made it quite soft. And also, not, not talking too much about that, uh, important is with the latest update, uh, Kunos made it relevant how high the car is set up because uh, the level of water on the track will be like one or two millimeters which will affect your overall ride height which affects your whole aero balance so you actually have to raise the car a little from lowest value of 55 at least to something like 57 is what I did played around a bit there maybe there's more in it uh, didn't adjust the wing I think because I felt that was fine uh, the balance overall is all right, you're not going too fast anyway. Um, and something in the rain, or say in cold weather in general, is the brake ducts. You will see that once I'm on the track that the brakes will, even even without any 
break, I don't know if zero is actually off, but zero is the lowest value you can have for the rear brakes. Um, the brakes will remain quite cool. So by reducing the brake ducts, I get some more heat in the brakes, which makes braking better. But also the brake heats the rim and heats the tire and keeps the pressure up. So with a, with a hotter brake, you will always heat the tires, which will help in, in low temperature situations. Um, sorry, so let's get to the driving. I think I just changed camber a little too, to go into that direction where I have the inside or the middle on the track, but not the outside, um, to just drain more water to the side of the tire and, and have more grip. Um, let's get to driving. I'm not going to push too much now, so I, I wouldn't be able to talk much. Let's start the engine and go. And the first thing I will do is hit the brakes until I really start the lap. Because warm brakes, as I told you, will heat the tire, will heat the rim, will have me <coughs> give me proper braking for the first turn. And from here, I think we can go. Haven't driven today, so maybe give me a lap or two to adapt. In the first last we will get very far to the outside here. I then break hard to third. Oh yeah, and I always stay a little on the brakes the whole time. But I'm not like in the dry where I just floor the brake pedal. I will trail brake way more into the corner. Also, I'm not going to just floor the throttle and let the traction control all the work, uh, let the traction control all the, do all the work, but I will try to just be very close to the point where the traction control kicks in. You can see that I just use full throttle for a short second mid-turn which will make the car slightly turn around a bit and make it face towards the exit. And then I go off the throttle a little to stop the traction control from, from interacting too much. I have to gather my thoughts again. vital to go from the outside in here and then just let the car work itself to the apex. Easy on the throttle. I'm way too aggressive when talking. Should have, should have warmed myself up really a little. But now with the first lap done, you can see that the pressures are all right. Which you can see... Do I have a mouse here? No, I don't. Which you can see that all three pillars of each tire have the same height. We could go even for something where the middle pillar is a bit higher than anything else. Just to try and see how the car and the game reacts to it. Oh, that was the problem. I had the traction control on 4 instead of 5. Now that should make everything a little better now. Try not to touch the curve so much because it really slows you down on acceleration. You can use the curb here a lot. Same here if you can get it inside enough. Easy on the brake until it turns and floor the throttle shortly to make the car rotate. Then back out of the throttle a little to prevent the traction control from working too much. And then once the car is straightened and has a grip, you can floor it. Wait for it. Now floor shortly. That worked like a charm this time. Avoid the curb by an inch. That 
is the way to do it. Just floor it and have like a slight oversteer to the corner. You can see in the delta how much I gain right now. And here's a little crest is where I break. Uh, actually a little earlier maybe. And then stay on it here. That was a way better thing to do. Not full throttle. Just let the car work itself into the corner. Same here, have like some small oversteer to make the car rotate. Which works perfectly on tractor control 5, but doesn't work at all on tractor control 4 or 6. Easy on the brakes still, you can hear the ABS working. Don't force it, it's rainy, it just takes time for the car to turn. That's more like it, but talking always slows me down, so I'm like half a second too slow there. Can short shift. Now use all the curb, it's very understeer here. So don't turn like this too much, it won't help you. Uh, on the actual hot stint I have some corners where I turn down the traction control to 4 at some corners. To get more rotation in. For example here you can do it once the car is straight. And you can go over the curb if you do it right, but that wasn't. Here we definitely need traction control 5, 4 will be too few. Now going outside here will trigger the traction control all the time, so I lose a lot of time right away. You can see it in the delta. Try to hit the curb here inside. That will give you some extra rotation. The slower you get, the more wheel angle you can use. And once you back out of the throttle, the car will likely understeer. So you need to really find the spot where you can stay on the throttle. So finding the right turning point is crucial in all these corners. You can go very much inside here, use the curb. That's a bit wide maybe, get the car to rotate a little back out of the throttle again. See, once I go out of the throttle a little and just have a little less traction control engagement, the car will accelerate way better. That was a nice one here. Will give me a nice lineup for the exit here. And you can see in the delta that uh, that worked out. Gave me a couple, say half a tenth there. And now watch the brake pedal, how long I trail it into the corner. And then on the throttle right away to get the rotation and I gain just two tenths right there for doing it right. That's a bit narrow. You can use a lot of curb on this one. Stay on it, stay on it, it rotates. Decrease traction control by one here. I sometimes like to do that. Don't break on the curb. Actually, traction control 4 in the hairprints here 
might not be the bad uh, worst choice. Gives you a little more acceleration if you can handle the oversteer. You see, there's so many things you can do wrong or right that it's very easy to lose a lot of time in the rain by just doing small mistakes. That's why the gaps in the rain usually are bigger, because it's harder to find the right line and the right way to drive the car. It just needs way more subtle inputs from steering to braking to acceleration. And you really have to make every corner work um, on its own, kind of. Every corner has its own style it needs in the rain. That was a nice one there. Um, I increased traction control to 5 again. That wasn't too good. Staying inside, more important here to line up for a nice exit there. That was a bit wide again. And the more you steer uh, on, on, on corner exit, the more the traction control will kick in because the rear is losing grip. So be very easy on the steering. That's why you'll see me do these micro corrections all the time. There you go. See, going wide there costs like one, two tenths right away. Traction control four here again, not five, to get some extra rotation through this one, else you run out of track. And then break it to the outside to just get a nice turn entry. Very easy on the throttle here. Wasn't ideal. I mean, I think in the actual hot stint I would do two 14s by now. Still tracks control 4, which gives me some extra rotation out of here. And listen closely always to the traction control. The less it kicks in, the more green my delta will become. So let's try a nice one here. Use all the curb on all the sides. Yeah, braking a little late. Correction needed. Still get the curb hooked here. Now rotate a little and then back out again right away out of the throttle once you feel the rotation coming in. And then just give it enough throttle to almost trigger the traction control. There you see the rotation coming in. too lazy to keep it inside the track there, would have gained me more time. I always use fourth here because it just creates the right amount of oversteer and now you can see in the delta that I did it right this time and probably gaining me a tenth onto the straight. Traction control to four again for this one because we want in the second gear to do a little rotation right here. 
And I used the third just for a short amount because the second will actually hit the limiter. Short shift always gives nice, tr nice traction here. Makes it a bit safer on the exit. You can use the inside one there slightly to get some turn. But overall you don't want to hit curbs too much. Only the tiniest bit is, is okay. Everything more than that will slow you down. Uh, hooked nicely. Um, actually, in the in the hot stint, the, the track gets better all the time, so you should basically always have a green delta, by a little margin at least. That was almost too much. If you go wide, go over the curb. That was a bit fast, but trail braking helps out. Remain that very narrow and small drift, then you will have a good time there. Now went a bit too wide there, but it carries more speed. That's a little wide as well. Gonna lose some time there. Oh, like three to four tenths. You can see that it's actually work on the wheel quite a lot to keep the car in the exact position that I want it to be. Like small, small drift on the rear axle, sometimes it's small four wheel drift. And then just touching the brake very little. So the car slows down a little more, but the tire can't take much in the rain, so you have to be very gentle with the brake. How much to go? Two more laps. Well, I'll finish it, it's not going to be a very good stint. But I do it nonetheless to have something to show you guys. Now the Delta is very green, though I didn't really make a good, nice turn. But it's just because the track gets better. That is not good. Not at all. I see how much that say tiny error costs almost half a second or more. And then same issues always once you try to make up this the last time you make just more errors so just go back to your usual driving not try to get time back on that very lap it's not gonna happen really yeah it's a very very narrow margin that you have to hit for the car to work Sky is clearing up now. That was a slight fall. We drift into the corner, barely noticeable. And if you're on the Loggy Tech or Trustmaster wheel, it's highly unlikely you will feel it at all in the wheel. Need some more. Need some motor that can deliver more subtle forces there to give you that information. Okay, one more to go. I think uh, a very low 13 or even a 12 would be a good lap by now. Now we have some grip. Do 
use throttle here to have little oversteer there and then position the car further to the outside for the last right hander out of this section. Now again massively. Seven tenths it is. Rotation in. Off the throttle here for a brief moment to create that little understeer over the curb. Nice, don't do that. If you hook the curb, make sure you hook it until the green stuff. Else it will just put you wide. Uh, yeah, and don't be too aggressive on the brake. Let the car work itself into the apex. There's nothing you can do to change it. Don't force it. Slight oversteer. Um, uh, almost too much. But the delta keeps stable at least, so that was alright. So this was one of those stints, um, pretty sure I haven't answered everything but it's hard to concentrate and keep the car on track where I want it to be in these conditions. They're quite tricky, um, let's see if I can upload the setup somewhere. Um, let me know, well, that time is well, probably not as good. Let's say there's at least four, five seconds in the first lap alone that I just lost. And overall, where did I lose all the time? So you can see the stint I did earlier was pretty well and talking cost you like a second pull lap easily. Um, I'll, I end it here and well, let me know in the comments as always what else you like to know. And see you in the next video, I guess.